In this short program, we're going to look at some of the potential SPAD risks inadvertently caused by signalers, signaling technicians and track maintainers. A category B SPAD is where the signal is passed at danger without authority because the aspect wasn't displayed in sufficient time for the driver to stop safely at the signal. The most common cause of a category B SPAD is either equipment failure or where the signal is replaced to danger in error. What you have just seen is a typical Category B SPAD. In this case, the S&T technician mistakenly dropped the power to a TPWS module, causing a signal to revert to danger. The driver of the approaching train was too close to the signal to stop, even though he made an emergency brake application. It's a traumatic experience for the driver. After all, he's got no idea why the signal has been put back. There could be an imminent risk of collision. This signal protects the entrance to a single line. Even if he'd managed to stop the train before passing the signal, it would have been a very uncomfortable experience. And what about the passengers on the train? Quite apart from the coffee being spilled and the catering trolley running over someone's foot, there's always anxiety when the emergency brake goes on and the train stops in the middle of nowhere. We've asked a driver who's had a Category B SPAD to tell us how it affected him. A few months ago, I was working a, an eight-coach train down from Charing Cross to, to Hastings. Um, left Roberts Bridge, um, normal, normal run. Uh, approaching the signal, green, distant signal, no, no problem. And the signal protecting the tunnel and the single line was at green as well. And all of a sudden, just that notice, whoop, signal's gone back to red. So uh, brought the train quickly to a stand. The only, only problem with that particular signal is it protects a, a single line tunnel. So automatically going through your mind, whether you've passed a train or not, you're thinking, oops, <laughs> could it be for a reason? In Andy's case, the signal was replaced to danger by human error, rather than equipment failure. What actions are we taking to reduce equipment failure events, which result in Category B spads? Here's Andrew Simmons from Railtrack headquarters. Well, we are introducing a new improved monitoring process that looks at all chains of aspects, not just those that actually create Category B SPADs. Well, the zones and regions will be required to put the information or change of aspects into a national database. This will allow the engineers to examine the database to determine components that need changing or systems that need an upgrade. So far, we've looked at the risk of Category B SPADs arising from equipment failure and from accident or error on the part of signalling technicians. What can be done to minimise these risks, as far as signalling technicians are concerned? Here's Wallace Wetherill from Railtrack headquarters. I think the advice I would give to signalling technician and those that work on and about the track is that they need to th consider what activity they're actually doing and how that may affect any trains that are in the area and discuss whatever activity they need to do with the signaller so the signaller can ensure that there are no trains that will be affected. Signalling technicians aren't the only ones who cause Category B spads. Take a look at this. Here he comes now. Now, as soon as he's by your clearing point, and you can see his tail lap, and you can clear back. Oh, and don't forget to give call attention, because if you Sorry don't... Sorry to interrupt, Derek. Steve been out to see that to us No, mate, I haven't seen him all morning. Perhaps he got dropped off by the first stopper. Whoa, 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 not that one. Bloody, you've just slung the bloody starter back in front of it. The signallers are very conscientious bloke and was taking the training of the youngster very seriously. 
But that distraction at the vital moment was all that was needed to cause a spad. Now you may be asking what the fuss is about. After all, these Category B spads were all right side failures. Well, quite apart from giving the driver a fright and causing discomfort to the passengers, there's the whole business that follows any spad. First, we need to get all the details from the driver. Then there's the RT3185 form to fill in. Is the driver feeling fit to continue? If not, there's relief to arrange. All this soon adds up to some hefty delays. Trains in the rear of the incident are now coming to a stand at danger signals where they wouldn't normally expect to stop. Category A spads have occurred in these circumstances, and that's the last thing we want. Distraction or lack of concentration can also affect signalers in more modern signalling centres like panel boxes or IECCs. We went to Leicester to speak to a route production manager, Andy Sakladi. In this scenario, we're going to look at a consequence which led to a Category B spad in and around the Salby Junction area. In this instance, the signaller was selecting and deselecting routes in the Leicester station area. He then went on to do a general panel observation, observing the mainline train and the following slow line train, which needed to go from mainline to slow line. He then went over to the Salby Junction area of the panel with the intentions of deselecting the A button on Lima Romeo 484 signal. In his error, the signaller then deselected Lima Romeo 484 mainline signal panel button, which led to the Category B spad and the change of aspect of the mainline train. The first incident we looked at was caused by a careless signal technician, and the second by a distracted signaller. Category B spads have also been caused by accidental damage to line side equipment or cabling during track maintenance work. As we saw earlier in the programme, Andrew Simmons, uh, the signal engineer for Railtrack, took you through some of the actions that they are taking to better understand the causes of signal reversions in Category B spads. But I think it's also worth, um, worth noting that there is a massive amount of work going into the fitment of uninterrupted power supplies, improved track circuits with replacement of track circuits with axle counters which we hope will give us a much more reliable infrastructure um, which will lead to less category B spads in the longer term. In fact we're committed to it. Signals that I have a vital uh, role to play um, by the attention to detail of, of SGI 7 um, by observing trains as they pass signals or track circuits on the signal box panel. Um, we saw in the video the distractions and how they have a <coughs> consequence cause onto cat B spads. Um, for example, one of the distractions is the, the lacking concentration. A lot of the work which is um, carried out by a signaller is repetitive. The day-to-day -day running of the trains, um, the same train at the same time of day, the same signal sequence followed by another train. And it's just by having a positive response to the distractions which can have a reduction in the overall um, Category B spans. Whatever part you play in the day-to-day -day operation or maintenance of the railway, take care and think about the consequences of what you do. A small and seemingly insignificant mistake can have very serious consequences. The final message that I would have to anybody involved in work on the railway that could affect the signalling system is always think about what you're doing and try to minimise as best you can the chances of there being a Category B SPAD. At the end of the day, it's all about doing our job in a totally professional way. Thank you.